there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tommy. If this is your first time checking out the channel, I talk about ex-vegan, but obviously being an ex-vegan, obviously fitness, nutrition and religion as well. Today I'm actually bringing on a great Polish activist for who is vegan. For, her name is Veganica. If you'd like to just introduce yourself, Veganica, tell the, the, the people a little bit about your story, how you became vegan. I think that'd be a great way to kind of segue into things. Hello, welcome. I hope you already know me because it's not my first time on uh, Tommy Tommy's channel. <clears throat> but maybe somebody is new, and the video will be on both our channels. So I also need uh -huh. to welcome uh, my own audience and both also uh, Tommy's audience. Uh, yes, I am from Poland, so I am non-native English speaker. In fact, I have a huge problem with understanding Tommy's pronunciation. So <laughs> yeah. sometimes you may feel that. I don't really relate to what he answered. Maybe mm -hmm. I, sometimes I need to listen later to fully understand what he answered. So I, I feel better in the position of like telling my version and then asking questions to me because well, sometimes well, I well, don't well, understand the full well. his answer. So I'm really curious in your Tommy experience in with um, animal rights movement. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was, I am very curious about the reasons why you left the movement uh, when for some time we even had an express impression. I had the impression that you were even anti-vegan. Well, then you, yes, you, you deny this. And I see that you are very friendly to me and so very supportive to, to my work. So, um, so actually, I want to understand, well, what happened? Why you left? I'm very obsessed about effectiveness of our work for animals. I want to see the results. I know that many results is impossible to see. It's a rather investment in, in new generations. But I also I am interested in this kind of activity, which is realistic, realistic. Something I want to focus on this. What we have chance. We have any chance to to make a change. I really want to make mm -hmm. a change, not just to. Yeah talk about, you know, uh, theoretical, uh, moral, something very abstract, which for majority of people will be completely, completely abstract, yes? Mm -hmm. So I really want to make, so therefore I really want to hear, uh, but we decided that maybe this conversation we'll make another time because probably it's going to be a longer conversation because you also promised to tell me about your experience in Slaughterhouse, which I also want to hear. So probably yeah. this is going to be a longer conversation. I think, uh, I think I could probably just kind of summarise it to start with to give people all of a second a segue into what we'll be talking about next time. But really why I left obviously was because of health reasons. That was the part of the reason why I left veganism. But... Why I left the actual vegan movement was basically because of infighting within my movement that I started. Obviously, people that have watched my channel actually know that I started the Save Movement and Anonymous for the Voiceless and Vegan Outreach in Scotland, well, in Ayrshire, Scotland, where I live. And what I found was I brought on a lot of new activists to obviously help as basically as kind of co-organisers of the group. From there, they were really, really friendly. Then further down the line, what actually happened was there started to be a lot of infighting in the, the group chat that we had, basically making accusations about various people and myself. And they were basically fighting for power, really. there was It was all about getting them in in charge and kicking out the organisers, which was myself and Lucy, who actually started the group. So first off, Lucy actually left the group because of infighting. I stayed on for a little while. I thought everything was going really, really well. And then basically the infighting just kept going on and on and on. It got to the point, like I say, that they were just really wanting power. And sadly, that seems to be what happens in the, the, the vegan movement. They seem to be that people come on board, but they want power. They want it to be about them rather than the animals that they're fighting for. And for me, that just came to the, the, drawing, the, the drawing point where I felt to myself, if it's not going to be about the animals and it's going to be about them, then I'm going to step aside and I'm not going to have anything to do with it. Because I wanted it to be focused on the animals and that's what it always should be. But mm -hmm. I, feel, I feel that some people get involved in it for the wrong reasons and that certainly was the experience that I had. Uh -huh. But uh, Tommy... Um... 
So we must decide right now because I know that uh, the time is limited we have. So mm -hmm. shall we continue this topic? Because I would say, yeah, it might be you know, long or maybe today we will uh, discuss a little bit what is actually uh, very, very, uh, you know, a lot, uh, broadly discussed and uh, and I already, my, I even myself uploaded a uh, recently video about Holocaust and I saw you were on Tristan, uh, Prima right. Edge Health channel, uh, uh, also related to this topic. So maybe we will shortly discuss rather this topic and uh, your, your, how you, and religion, because recently I had uh, several religion related mm -hmm. topics. So maybe let's focus today on this topic and we'll get yeah. back to animal rights movement. Absolutely. Next time, OK, that's great. Yeah. Uh, OK, so I'll tell you, I saw you on uh, uh, Prima Edge uh, Health's channel, but I didn't have time to watch it because there was, there was uh, more than three hours. It was quite long, was yeah. Crazy long. So. <laughs> I didn't have time to watch it, so I don't even know what you said there. I saw only a short piece from from this Tristan speech, which was very, very weird to me. Uh, he said he was mocking the idea of chicken's Holocaust, something like this, which is for me another proof that he had never had the Bible in his hands that I'm sure he had never read the Bible because he would very fast, very easily, actually um, in the third book, he will immediately find the um, description of chickens Holocaust. It's all there. So, uh, so that his behavior, his behavior was crazy to me. But anyway, let's not talk about Tristan. I'd like to know your opinion. What do you think? What is your position in this whole battle, battle uh, around this world about usage of this um, of this term Holocaust referring to animals? What do you think about this? In my opinion, it's something I never even used when I was vegan because I, I found it actually turned people off rather than actually kind of let their minds actually know the, the, the differences between... Because I feel what was going on there is they're equating it to, an, to like people and it's anthropomorphizing animals. I feel that's, in my opinion, it's the wrong way to go because I feel that you should be focusing on the animal's traits. And obviously, I do believe that animals have souls. So I'll put that out there right away. That's something I've, I've always believed in. I be, but I believe it's doing the wrong thing by using the word Holocaust because I believe it's mocking everything that happened to the Jews. Obviously, my grandfather fought in the Second World War. He was a prisoner of war, but he got caught by the Japanese. So for me, I feel that's it's quite derogatory. I, I don't feel it's a good way to go. The Holocaust, referring to Jewish people, but that's also another huge problem. Because mm -hmm. when you say that it refers to Jewish people, you are already discriminating half of the victims. There is already another huge international conflict around around this notion because Jewish want to emphasize their role. They are promoting their nation through. They they get a lot of profits and they until now they make a huge business of this and they want to be the the only. Oh, they want to exclusively want to uh, this Holocaust work to be referred to them while they are just half of the um, victims. Uh, originally, I can, I can uh, that, yeah. camps were built for Polish people. I don't feel maybe it's just the kind of language barrier, but I don't feel it's them promoting that to, to endorse themselves. I believe it's because they were the the majority that was persecuted in that. They were I'm not half. saying. About half, okay, they were very important, but not mm -hmm. majority, they were half of victims. So you cannot uh, say they are important and Poles and majorly, maybe, no, you know, no, I, I'm not, camps were built for Poles, so they are not less that. important, okay. or, or gypsies were less important, or nobody's, other groups. So nobody's, I think we must, nobody's less uh, important honest. than another. That's another topic. That's political, huge issue. International big conflict. You are Scottish, so you are probably not even aware of this because it's mainly the conflict between Poland and Israel. So, and yeah. America is deeply involved, um, deeply, deeply. 
Okay, so that's our international huge conflict. So, but anyway, originally Holocaust has always referred to animals, animal sacrifices for the God. So they compared their fate to animals' fate. So to be correct, we must say that Holocaust is above all and first of all, it's animal sacrifice. And then as a metaphor, they use them to describe their faith as faith similar to animals which they used to abuse that terribly. That's it. So I, I understand that you, yes, you want to say something? I think, I think you can, can uh, you could use that in any context because it's been used in major battles for all throughout history. Even in, even in things like the Scottish battle, the Battle of Culloden, it's always been used, Holocaust, massacre. Yes. But I mm-hmm. feel, I feel that my personal opinion is that anthropomorphizing that I believe turns people off. I'm just saying what I believe because I've seen it personally when I use it on the streets. Obviously, I've done Anonymous Fizzle of Voices and many, many other forms of vegan activism. Every single time the the word Holocaust was used, people just shut off and they walked away because I'm just trying to advocate what is best to actually put it across to people because I feel that when you do that, it just turns people off. Those are two completely different things. You, When you are doing your activism, of course you are thinking, which is better? Me, I am sometimes changing my opinion even day to next day. Like one day I think, no, I should do this way. Another day, no, no, this is not a good idea. I will co- co- you know, focus on completely other activities or completely different narrative. I'm constantly thinking which is better, which is which is worse. I can, so I can understand that because <laughs> yes, it, because I was going to say I can understand that because what what one way of advocacy that you advocate to a person will be very very different to another. So. I used the Socratic method quite a lot when I was vegan, but a lot of people like to hear the cold hard truth. They like to really be like get the group the grim truth, like using words like murder and things like that. It hits home to them. But I feel that for the people I was talking to and the majority of the people, that just really turned turned them off. But like you said, mm-hmm. you can use a lot of different methods. Like mm-hmm. some some people will, will really like the the kind of mm-hmm. really hard method. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, therefore, I'm not asking which is a better way to, whether this is good or bad method. Maybe we can discuss on our another top, uh, another meeting when we will be talking about, uh, in general, um, the animal rights movement, which is good, like which way we should work, uh, which is which works, which doesn't work. Uh, but another thing is uh, what you really think, because you may think one one thing, but it doesn't mean that you have to use this argument. So exactly. I'm is asking, yeah. what is your true opinion? Uh, just according to your opinion, you don't have a problem with uh, uh, calling. Uh, I think that it's a bit lacking the precision because usually when they um, describe uh, what they describe as um, animal holocaust, usually they show images of uh, factory farms. And so this is rather the picture of uh, concentration camps. So holocaust is not exactly the same as concentration camps. So I think concentration camp would be more precise uh, word. But of course, it's another thing if you want to use it for people or not. Yes. I don't think they're concentration camps because, like I say, I've actually worked in a slaughterhouse and I could go into a lot in that in the, f- the future video that we do, but they're not, I wouldn't say they're concentration camps in that sense. I feel that's totally different. <laughs> what do you think when you hear about gas chambers? Because gas chambers are famous from concentration camps. So I feel, uh, do you think we should I, emphasize that gas chamber is always a bad thing? Doesn't matter whether we absolutely. put there, place there, people or pigs. It's always, always. Absolutely. Do you think it's, it's the same? It's majorly, majorly cruel. And I feel that that should be something that should, should be outlawed. I don't know why it is, but especially in the UK, that's the UK animal welfare way of actually like, slaughtering pigs, especially in England. Not... I didn't hear. There was a co- broken connection. I don't know. Maybe only from my side. Maybe it was recorded. I was going to say, I feel it should be... Obviously, gas chambers should be outlawed. I feel that they're really, really cruel. They're really, really inhumane. But unfortunately, it seems to be that in the UK, especially England anyway, 
the, that is the UK animal welfare. We are actually killing pigs. In Scotland, it's very, very different. They, they, they basically slaughter them the way they would slaughter a, a cow. It's basically just like in the throat kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like it's, it's a horrible way. I mean, it's like, I don't know why anybody could support that. It's something I would never, ever support in my life. Hence why I don't, I don't eat beef. I don't eat bacon, anything like that. I'm basically all about, I have some fish and the occasional eggs. That's as far as I go, basically because... I like to do what's best for my health and also doing my part for the animals. And I feel even if you if you aren't vegan, you should be striving to do the very, very best you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, actually, I also agree that um, we shouldn't appeal only to vegan, but we should be in dialogue with also non-vegan because uh, actually the, probably the bigger change for uh, animals can be done by non-vegan. You know, I think them even reducing or uh, deliberately stopping. I, I would. I always. I'm always trying to encourage people to at least or at first to stop buying chickens because there is the, it's the most bloody the, the biggest number of you know victims is in uh, in poultry business this is the most horrible thing so they're the, they're the most factory farm that's that is for sure i mean i would say if you're obviously going to go and buy chicken do it locally free range that are actually roaming in grass all the time there's not many of them but there is small farms that do that but like you said the majority of chickens are mostly all factory farmed and they get like a little postage stamp square to actually move in. So there's like 6,000 to a barn. Quite, quite oh, But horrible. it's just one dinner, one dinner for family and one whole life, you know. One one agony and just one short uh, dinner for just one family. It's it's the, the most cruel, uh, the most ineffective, the most cruelty, the most suffering in each uh, piece, each hundred grams of, of the meat. So well, that that brings us back to the same point that I was going to make as well. It's like you've you've got to look at it that people's health matters as well. I don't believe everybody can be vegan. Unfortunately, that is the truth. There's a lot of health issues that obviously stop people from being vegan. But like I said earlier, that doesn't stop you doing the best you can. You should always strive to do your best for the animals, the planet, your health as well. That's what I've always believed. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about uh, the idea of, uh, not the idea, but this whole project of uh, lab-grown meat? Uh, do you think if it will start to be being available in Scotland, you will be buying this one? Personally, I, I really wouldn't endorse that because I don't really know what's in it. I feel that that's, that's like swapping one bad behaviour for probably another. I feel that it's not something that we've, we've actually, in, in all our ancestry, that we've actually consumed. So it's the same. It's going back to like processed foods again. Like the biggest problem with dietary recommendations is many people follow the American standard diet. And that's why I believe that when they go initially vegan at the start, they get a lot of like health benefits. And then further down the lines, maybe things can set in. So I would say adding in things like the lab grown meat is just swapping another bad thing that's going to be another issue. Personally, I wouldn't support it. I know I, there's, I know there's, it's maybe something that some people would look into if they want to actually consume red meat and they, they want to go that way, but I, I wouldn't support it. I personally think that it's exactly the opposite. In case of lab grown meat, you can exactly know what is there because you know you will get the the full um, chemical analysis. You will know how much protein and what is there, and you know exactly that this is what is there. This what they declare it is like there will be standard uh, chemical components, and you will know this is the only chance that you will know what you have there because it's the opposite. When you are buying from the slaughterhouse, then you really don't know how many kinds of bacteria, mold, uh, and viruses, and uh, pathogens, and shit, and like, like I agree, with, I agree, with, I agree how with that. Chemicals, yeah. how much antibiotics? There is a lot of artificial, a lot of chemicals, a lot of um, pathogens in meat. So that you really, you can say you have no idea what you are buying. But in this case, it's sterile. It's there are no uh, parasites, no uh, bacteria. It's the only safe option to have uh, meat, yes? So I think it's exactly the opposite. 
Okay, something, uh, the connection is sometimes broken. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, All right. it's a serious kind of... Yeah, I was just going to say I totally agree with what you're saying there and that you don't know what you're getting for slaughterhouses and things because obviously I worked in a slaughterhouse. I've seen things like animals having like cancerous growths in them and the cancerous growths were just getting cut off and then repackaged and sent back out into the, slot, into the, the meat production lines and things like that, into the supermarkets. But what I would say is that you do know what you're getting for a local farm. That's what I would say. Don't support... Don't support factory farms. Don't support slaughterhouses. Support local farms. You know that if you're going there, you're getting beef and there's nothing else in it. Animals in Scotland, especially in local farms, aren't given antibiotics. There is farms that you can go and see the whole process. So I would say if you're going to do that, support farms like that. Don't be supporting supermarkets that obviously get factory farm food and the animals live a horrible life. It's bad all round. You know, the, the problem is that those guys, I don't uh, include you among them because you are not really openly support eating meat. But for example, guys like, like for example, Tristan or Bart, they always mention, yes, buy the best meat from local farm and so on and so on. But there are um, thousands of people listening to him from various countries where they don't have this uh, such farms or this quality of meat they they hear oh uh, this is uh, the meat is good the meat will cure all my uh, diseases the meat will solve all my problems they believe in any magical power of meat many people are this way they believe it's meat is magic will solve all their problems and but for example, uh, in Poland, uh, um, all those uh, um, small um, farms, pig farms, were destroyed by uh, African swine flu. And so, actually, we, we almost don't have it, yes? So, you won't get good quality of meat. You can just go to a supermarket. Very often it's uh, imported from, very often from sick animals from abroad, for example, from Denmark, they they are selling sick animals to Poland. People buy it, people don't know it. Um, one one farmer even is now is trying to sue them in the court that the quality of meat in Polish markets are, is poisonous. Is that poisonous? We will see how, whether he has chances to, to win what the court will say. I'm really curious. So because sometimes they say, oh, you vegan say this. No, Polish farmer who is fighting uh, against those uh, big factory uh, farms, he decided to sue them and he has the chemical analy analysis of those uh, the, the meat in our supermarkets that it's pure poison and we will see so so all think, those people I think, you know I yeah. think what Trist Tristan's actually talking about is like I, I don't know what obviously you've kind of summarized what it's like in Poland but I feel that most countries do have good local farms that they can go to obviously you've summarized that Poland's totally different I believe what Tristan's trying to say is he's going from it. He's a local farmer himself. He knows a lot of local farmers around the States and everything. And he's basically saying support them. So I can understand where he's coming from as well. And I can understand your point just the exact same on your country. Like I say, every country is slightly different. And that's why I would say don't listen to everybody. Look at your own country and what the, the scenario is. I don't know because I... I had seen recently, even on garden farms, uh, his post that uh, he's complaining that uh, factory farms uh, are trying to destroy local farms, that even he already decided to quit uh, cows and he will only focus on those smaller uh, animals because they are destroying this business. So maybe There's, it there's a be reason for that though, that's because the, the, these big farms actually get government subsidies, so they actually... Yeah, of course, so it's everywhere like this, in the whole so European Union, they'll, they'll, the they'll bigger push, the bigger they'll push out. They'll push out the small local farms, that's why dairy farms in Scotland, they've basically nearly went bust. They're, they're nearly bankrupt because yes, yes, exactly. They're all bankrupt. The, all the super, they all have the no, no, they have no chance to compete. So, um, all right, but anyway, we have just a small time. So I don't know. Um, so tell me, uh, let's get back to maybe religion. Religion, okay. How did you feel like during my last debate when you heard um, as a uh, justification uh, of? 
killing animals, uh, the, the verse that God gave us dominion uh, over animals. How did you feel it? Because uh, I think all of us vegans who had watched the movie Dominion, so for me, I felt like each time, so I was trying not to show my reaction, just uh, I was trying, yeah. How did you feel as a Christian hearing such explanation that it's okay because God gave us dominion over animals? Well, you've got to look at it. A lot of people don't understand that the Bible has been translated many different times through different languages, Greek and things like that. A lot of the, the words in the Bible have been lost in translation. Actually, what if you look into it, what dominion actually means, it means stewardship of the animals. So it means shepherding, looking after the animals, whereas people take it as dominion over the animals. That isn't actually what it meant. So... Looking That's after, but totally false, looking after really doesn't, looking after care, care doesn't include killing. And unfortunately, yeah. in the Bible, over many, many pages of the Bible, we have uh, a lot of descriptions of, of Holocaust, of animals' Holocaust. The whole uh, book of Leviticus is about animals' Holocaust, almost. It's the main topic. How to do Holocaust, how to make it properly. But you still can't, you still can't rule so it's out in, everything that it's, happened it, after it, the fall. It's in contradiction to what you said, that it's uh, our care about animals. So you cannot care and then sadistically kill them, because it's also very important to emphasize that, to stress this, that it's not the same as, you know, Jewish wanted to kill their suffer as Holocaust. They were trying to compare their suffer to animals' Holocaust, but you can never compare gas chamber to that Holocaust, because they were sadistically tortured until death. It's not the same as gas chamber. Gas chamber is not as cruel as a biblical Holocaust. Well, you could take it in a lot of different contexts, because like I was going to say, like... <sighs> You've got to understand that you, you can't rule everything that happened after the fall. The fall precedes everything else. That's where a lot of people get things wrong. They take parts of the Bible and they cherry pick them to suit their own narrative. Like I say, that everything that happened after the fall, God actually did give people permission to like eat animals. But at the same time, he didn't give them dominion over animals. He didn't say that you could go and do slaughter animals and do what you want. Mm -hmm. he, did, he did give you permission to eat animals, yes. That is part I of think that's, that's the main problem. That's the main problem they, that Christians are trying to cover many atrocities by context. But in which context you are allowed, um, you are allowed, for example, to to smash the little little girl or crush the boy on the rock or uh, in which context? You, it's okay and it's moral to sell your own daughter as a sexual slave to another man. Is there any such context? Can you uh, justify by context? Because, you know, well, for example, if we are talking about brutal, brutal murder over a little child uh, or an infant, an infant is an infant. Infant doesn't understand his son. It is what was the scene of his grand grand grandfather, and why he is now supposed to uh, be brutally murdered. Uh, infant doesn't understand in what uh, century he's living. He, it's just his little soul no, just came to this world. And why? Why you think in which? What context can justify? Uh, torturing and killing brutally infants. Well, that's the point. It's not very hard to convince somebody that the Bible's full of contradictions. That is, if they don't know the Bible very well, all you have to do is actually cite things like Proverbs, where the, it actually says, answering a fool to his folly. That's that Proverbs 26, chapter 4. Or maybe point out Matthew, where he places the Sermon on the Mount, Things like that. Even Elijah is a good king in Second Chronicles chapter 13. And you can do things like, obviously, a little digging, however, will actually show you that Proverbs isn't written to usually give universal valid principles. So the Gospels are not meant to simply like factual reports. 
but bring out the theological significance of real events that interfered with contemporary audience. So it's, it's basically, you've got to look at it that they're, ve they're very, very different. Like, I, I don't know why you can, you can cite a lot of different chapters and actually come away with different things. Okay, let me let me read to you just just short verse from the Bible from Hosea. I don't know Hosea. How how do you read it? Hosea, the book. Uh, the people of Samaria must uh, bear their guilt because they have uh, rebelled against their God. They will fall by this word. They little ones. We have um, infants or yeah infants will be dashed to the ground. They pregnant women ripped open. So this is kind of abortion, yes? The pregnant women ripped open. So the, we will kill the child. You So the God is ordering to kill unborn child. Well, In uh, what uh, uh, context or historical context can justify this situation and this God's order? I've, I've wrote this down, so just follow along with me. I'm just going to say, of course, people who bring this charge against the Bible don't have these instances of human violence and injustice in their mind, but rather they are thinking of the many stories where God brought violence on people either directly or through agency of his followers. Think of the flood story in Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, the killing of the Egyptian soldiers at the Red Sea, Exodus chapter 14, verse 15, or the conquest, Joshua chapter 1, verse 12, but while it is hard to get our 21st century Western minds around it, these are stories of justice, bad people receiving the judgment that they deserved. God brings the flood against the violent humanity in Genesis chapter 6, verse 11 to 12. He closes the Red Sea against the Egyptian soldiers who were wanting to try to kill the Israelites. And he commands Joshua to fight the Canaanites because their sin had reached its full measure. It's only people who have lived in relatively peaceful circumstances who have the luxury of being turned off by such stories. The hard truth of the Bible is that people who reject God and harm other people will eventually receive punishment for them. That's also the message of the New Testament and the teaching behind the heaven and hell. The divine violence of the Bible is part of God's battle against evil. And the battle develops as time goes on. When Jesus comes, he eventually heightens and intensifies the battle so that it is now directly toward the spiritual powers and the authorities, and these enemies are defeated not by killing, but by dying on the cross, where he triumphs over this. So that's that's my interpretation of it. Uh, but of that particular situation, uh, what will happen to this um, killed, murdered, unborn child? Because according to church, the child before being baptized won't go to heaven. And why, uh, why children are being punished for their grand, grand, grand uh, father's sins? You cannot say about a child that he uh, abandoned God, that he was disobedient, or you can say nothing about this new soul. So, do you believe that God is then sadistic? Is that is that what you're trying no, no, no. to say? No, no, exactly. I don't believe that God is sadistic. Therefore, I believe the Bible is not um, any reliable source of knowledge about God. Because what is written, it doesn't fit, in no way it can describe God. This is, is like, those are typical human, the worst human features here described, yes? Yeah, but you've got to understand, like, it's, it's, Very... it's just, the, the, the people in the Bible are just like us, there's going to be good and bad in the world, that's always going to happen, but at the same time, you can't dismiss the Bible and then say you believe in God, because that is God's word. That, we found, we found for, the, this is what I'm trying to say, this is not God's word, because God's word is, you must go and make women ripped open, God is saying this, no, this is not God's word. You can have direct relationship with the God. You don't need, uh, you don't need well, Bible. But I would ask you, you talk what, to what, God what directly. God actually do you do you worship? Because I'm not sure. Actually, that's what I was going to ask you. What God actually do you worship? Because I'm not sure. It's the Christian God, or it's it's for it's, it's Zeus or whoever it is, Odin, whatever. I'm not sure. I mean, you, I, you've got the to... God I'm worshiping has nothing to do with human features at the first place. 
but we're actually created in the image of God, so we are God's likeness. It's, God, so God, 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 God may not have human features, but God, we are created in the, the image of God. So, so I am yes, me. I'm contemplating again a, a lot about uh, what um, what kind of consciousness the God may have, and. Uh, Actually, it is very difficult to define what kind of relationship we may have with God. Uh, it's very, very difficult. I can only say that when I am praying, I get results. My prayers are fulfilled about what, you know, for Jay, it was so much shock because he, he doesn't believe in God. He was shocked that prayers can be fulfilled. So he called me mentally ill when I said that I pray and I get my prayers are, are fulfilled and I have true relationship with the God. He never prayed and never probably he doesn't have relationship. He, it was like crazy. Uh, so uh, I mean, he's, I he's, a, he's, a big, he's a big believer in God. Yeah, he's a big believer in God. But I just feel it was quite wrong of him to start going down the road of insulting you. I will say that 100%. That shouldn't have happened. But so I say that I have my uh, prayers fulfilled, this I can claim, but I can never uh, like claim 100% that they are fulfilled by the God himself, because I don't know, maybe there are also other beings like angels, uh, let's call them angels, I, I have no idea. I, yeah, I would say that also, it works, also, yes, I that you, pray, I get the answer, I ask, I am said, I have, I am, for example, about many events, uh, I know in advance. I have so what, no... what actually led you to leave Christianity? I will ask you that. What was the reason but, for that? Uh, exactly, exactly such words. Exactly the Bible. I just I'm reading, and I want to be honest. Is it possible that God is telling this to me? That is it possible that God is telling this? Is it God's word? No way. This is uh, this is false. This is fake. This is. Um, this is exploitation by Moses, exploitation of poor people, of, uh, uh, you know, simple people. He was pretending to speak on behalf of God. I believe that I know much more about God than Moses. So also I, I, I can I, write I really, the Bible. I really feel, if I, really I was as bad person as Moses, I would write the Bible and, and try to teach this is God's word. But I am not. But how do, how do you know? How person. do you know? How do you know what you're getting is from God? Because we, we leave ourselves open to satanic deception. That is unfortunately the way the devil works. And for you to dismiss the Bible, then could be the devil actually. No, no, no. To this is the there, but, okay, can be anything worse than what is written in the Bible. For example, in God Demands Holocaust, which is the most sadistic method of kill you can imagine. What can be worse? Nothing can be worse. So the way God is described, it's nothing lower. It's the bottom of the bottom of the cruelty, yes? Nothing can be worse than this. But, so but like, a, like, are, a, like a tool well, jail maybe on it, Satan. that's all we Maybe this is satanic Bible, but not God's Bible. It's definitely not a satanic Bible. It's like I told you. No, that maybe it's just fake Bible. I think, in fact, I think definitely it, not fake. Definitely not fake either. I think yeah. Moses was just, um, just uh, you know, uh, he wanted to exploit people. And God is justice. That's. I think all. actually the current, the modern science is telling us a lot about God. We shouldn't ignore this because we know a lot, a lot, a lot about God, uh, thanks to modern science. Mod modern science, in the most part, actually dismisses God. Unfortunately, no, no way. <laughs> actually, there, there is a, there is a few. I'll give you that. There is a few Not scientists. Few. That most, the majority of uh, actually, the, the, by science, the top of the science, I mean, is uh, quantum physics. Most of uh, physicists uh, believe in God, and for even uh, during my debate on God existence, I use the arguments from quantum physics, physics from our best professors and they are of course they are believers and quantum physics it's not like 100 percent it's it's suggesting that um, there must be a consciousness behind it it's suggesting it's not like i cannot uh, uh, treat it as 100 percent uh, proof but it, as a very very strong suggestion and uh, now, yes the most, the, the most of the scientists i've seen that have actually spoken about it they basically advocate everything under the the big bang but I'll always say that 
the Big Bang couldn't have happened without a creation because n- nothing comes from nothing. So that is always the case. Everything, there had to be a greater plan there. There is a few scientists that actually are beginning to look into that and actually believe that there was a greater intelligence behind it. But for the most amount of scientists I've seen, they basically just dismiss there being any kind of type of God. Uh, maybe it uh, depends which rank scientist. Yeah. Maybe if you meet a uh, yeah. like scientist PhD, maybe he's just, you know, he's very ambitious to become scientist, but by true, you know, very high level scientists like Einstein or, maybe, you know, the biggest uh, brains in history or, I mean, professor level of scientists, uh, they... So I guess yeah. what I was going to ask you, what I was going to ask you, if you don't believe that the Bible's right, do you believe that Jesus existed and do you believe everything about Jesus? I would say I am uh, deeply, deeply inspired by Jesus. I said that uh, his teaching became like part of me. I am shaped, uh, even my veganism is shaped by Jesus' words. So I would say he's close to my heart. So like I have a positive, um, I'm fond of Jesus. But in fact, I, I think I should say, I don't know. I don't know about his life, about who is he and what is his relationship with God, because it is a bit, you know, complicated for me why he ate meat. And some, many people are coming to, oh, Jesus ate meat. So so that That's means it. maybe he was a good person, but maybe not perfect. We cannot say he was free of sin because after all, he ate meat. So Well, he, he ate meat because that was given in God. And in the Bible, it actually says everything given by God is good. So that's where it comes from. But so so again, we are back to the question, uh, does God have the right to give us another person as a food? Because well, he is, he is, he is he, it's an yeah. independent person, so he must decide. God cannot decide, decide on, for example, chicken's behalf that it's okay. No, chickens might tell you it's okay. I'm giving you okay. Eat me. Uh, God has no right to speak on he has, he has the, else he independent has the right. person behalf. He has the right from the the, the the stance that he's he's a creator of everything. Yeah, I'm not saying that it. it that it's right to like slaughter animals unnecessarily. From a necessary standpoint, giving them the best life, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I know that you are in a hurry, so... And I was I just going to ask you one thing before you yes. go. I-, I wanted to clarify one point that you made, and it was basically what you said that Jesus on the cross is... And the, the, the suffering that Jesus had on the cross is just comparable the same to what a pig has in a slaughterhouse. And I know, and for me, I felt that was a little bit blasphemous because I feel that Jesus' suffering was for everything that we went through in the world, for our sins. I don't feel you can compare that. But you apply your emotion, private emotion, and are you allowed to do this? Because you are fond of Jesus and you are not fond of um, fond of um, random pig. Yeah, and but this yeah, is your yeah. own feelings, but, and are you allowed to apply your own private feeling? You are because you know Jesus; he's also part of you. But so, given, given and this fact, is actually given the fact, this given is actually the fact that I've which, worked in a slaughterhouse and I've, look, I've seen look, look, it. Look, Jesus himself is condemning this, this kind of this kind of thinking. Do it quickly, if you could do it quickly, and I'm not saying it's right. But that isn't the same as the suffering that Jesus went through. Like, how could you compare? A quick. No, no, I compare that. No, no, I compare that. Pig is as innocent, or maybe more innocent than Jesus. That they are both innocent, I can, I can and they that. both That's... suffer. I mean, in this way, because of course it's it's not the same situation. Oh, it's obviously different situation. Obviously, so I don't compare situations. I say that Pig is also innocent. Yes, because we always say that Jesus is innocent yeah. and he was uh, crucified. So Pig is also innocent in this way. But also, you must uh, Jesus uh, himself is condemning that uh, this kind of thinking that when somebody is close to your heart then you will give him a special treatment because you must have the same treatment for a random pig like someone who is completely not close to your heart you must be always justice just that okay i don't know this person i don't like this person it's even my enemy but it's also same person as my own for example son my own daughter my own mother or father so jesus was teaching us this exactly this way of thinking that you must 
treat somebody completely, completely strange to you, that you are completely unrelated with this person as somebody mm -hmm. closest to your heart. So, uh, yes, so. I think, it, I think what I was going to touch upon last is, and it's one point that you actually made that I thoroughly agree with, and it was basically about animals having souls. For me, I totally believe in that. And I'll give you a reason why I, I do believe in that. Obviously, I love my dogs. My dogs are my life. All my animals are my life, as long as, as with my wife. But when I was a child, the very a very strange thing happened. And it was the first time I ever saw an animal actually pass over. What actually happened was my grandfather's cat actually had cancer of the tongue. And he was passing away for maybe about four months. This day he actually passed away and myself and my mother and my grandfather were sitting in our living room and the, the, the door from the living room actually opened and the cat that had died actually walked in, he went to the, the, the kitchen, he turned his head and he looked at us and he disappeared. Oh. And that is gospel truth. The three of us actually saw it. It was me that directed my mum to it. I goes, I says, look at that, there's, there's Tiger. And the three of us all saw it. So, yeah, animals have souls. I've actually seen, like, before, I've, uh, even one of my dogs that have passed, sometimes I'm in the kitchen and I can feel, like, somebody rubbing at the back of my legs. So I do believe animals have souls and anybody that says they don't, they're just fooling themselves because I don't believe God would make us any different in that respect. Yeah. Great, great, fantastic. This, I feel so relieved to hear this from you, from a Christian. I feel, wow. What a relief to my heart. I, I'll tell you just one short story because you don't even know what an angel you always place on your channel. Uh, the the guinea pig I have on my arm on this uh, is yeah. uh, my avatar and you use this on also as um, uh, thumbnails. This pig already uh, passed away in in June and the story of him is when I adopted him he was already old and very sick mm -hmm. actually soon he was he, he was dying he was bleeding extremely very very in huge pain he was dying when I adopted him and then I prayed for him I prayed I prayed I don't know to the God or who to whomever who has the same sensitivity as me and whoever yeah. you know like I I'm not sure whether I this is God himself listening to my prayers or who i don't know i'm just praying i'm begging so and i was praying although he was already dying and terribly terribly sick losing a lot of blood i was begging for another year of his life i said no i just i just adopted him he's new i didn't even have time to give him my love it's too fast too fast i just took him and he will die no i yeah. i was asking for one more year and then i asked for more, more thing i was asking him like that please um make him die um, without pain no pain mm -hmm. no suffering to this to this little son i want him to die without any pain like peacefully and also yeah. fully conscious i ha want to have contact with him i want to look into his eyes and have contact with him before he's dying and also i want to know when it happens i don't want to wake up one day and see oh, he's dead i want to be with him until last moment i prayed for those things can you imagine that all those all those requests were like like perfectly fulfilled i received exactly uh, up to one day one more year and moreover he was even in a better condition he was already his no, really? style, his, he was stable he was stable but exactly one one year passed so suddenly he started dying like he was his state was stable and suddenly he became so weak he couldn't move because it was one year Mm -hmm. And so I took him and I was spending, I spent him like the whole night, like he was constantly looking into my eyes, you know, it was amazing. I, I was with him and he died peacefully without pain. Can you imagine everything was fulfilled? Yeah, that's, that's amazing. So, he, you know, I, he's my angel, that's why I, I keep this. Uh, as a, so now you will know what, who you have uh, there, you know, uh, he's... Uh, he's my angel Great. and you know because all all my requests like exactly precisely every, each my request was fulfilled i have this great hope that a lot, a god must really care about animals a lot mm -hmm. <sighs> i agree <laughs>
<laughs> cool. So I think so. We will finish at this point, yes. Yeah, I think it's been a good one. I'll just I'll just say to everybody, obviously, to go and follow Veganica. I'll put all the links down in the description below, and I'll speak to you on the next one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you very much for your attention for today, and see you next time. Thanks a lot again.